In the swamps of southern Louisiana, there are a plethora of interesting snake species which have each developed unique adaptations that help them survive in the beautiful but unforgiving habitat which they call home. Many species have evolved deadly venom or powerful constriction techniques, while others rely on a very different creature power, super speed. Enter the Blue Racer, one of the fastest snakes in Louisiana and the entire southeastern US. Ever since I saw this species on Zach's channel a few years ago, I've wanted a chance to encounter one for myself, and with his knowledge about Blue Racer habitats and a little luck, I was able to catch one of these elusive speedsters. Got him, got him, got him! You're here. here. Yeah. Sweet! Look at that, guys. That is a beautiful blue racer. Now, you can see this is much, much bigger than most of the racers that we have back at home. Uh, he has a thick body. He's pretty darn heavy. That's definitely the biggest racer I've ever seen in my life. Well, now you see, upon first glance, they do have a pretty similar body shape to the racers back at home. He's a little bit less slender, a little more stockily built, and it looks like his skull is actually a little bit thicker. But man, look at that coloration. That is so distinctive. Now, of course, there's gonna be lots of variation among different individuals, but almost all blue racers will have some kind of bluish gray dorsal. And then this one has a beautiful yellow uh, ventral pattern there. And Zach says, this is pretty rare, right? But I have guys... no clue. He said it's, my dad said it's kind of normal to see the males yeah. with a yellowish belly. Cool. Uh, however, mine, I believe that I've caught have been a male. Like I've caught males before and I haven't yeah. seen that much yellow. So it's just a really cool little extra color thing. Yeah. So that's awesome. This is probably, so then it looks like this is probably a male. He's definitely a pretty large male at that. And you see that right now he's looking me dead in the face. And that's just, these guys have extraordinary vision. You can see that the eyes are positioned uh, right looking forward in the skull. That gives them binocular vision just like humans. They have excellent depth perception. You can see those eyes are really large compared to the rest of the skull. So what these guys do when they're hunting is a lot of times you'll see them, they're, all their body will be in the grass, but maybe half of their body will be sticking up and they'll be looking around, and that's called periscoping. So they'll just look around, they'll get a, a kind of a, they'll prop up their bodies like so, and get a bird's eye view and look down in the grass for their prey. Now these are a pretty uh, generalist species. They can live in all kinds of different habitats. You can find them in thick forests, you can find them in more open areas. We're hunting for them right now in kind of this swampy area, uh, but edge habitat is pretty key for these guys. They do really like edge habitats to hunt for their prey. Now he can take anything from frogs to small snakes. Uh, these guys really love lizards uh, and of course mice. Now their name is Colubur constrictor, just like the genus that's exactly the same as the black racers back at home. However, they are slightly different and they are considered a different species. And, and also it seems like you can see right there by the eye, there's a, a nice little black stripe. And up north, these are also called black mass racers, but once again, it's more of a formality uh, and they're also considered to be in this same species. Now, as far as ecology goes, these do fulfill pretty much the same ecological niche as black racers back at home. When they're this size, they're that middle layer of the ecosystem, so they're preying on all kinds of different smaller animals, but these are also definitely food for things like hawks, opossums, raccoons, or also potentially feral cats or dogs. Now, I wouldn't recommend catching or handling racer snakes if you're not very confident in your abilities to handle non-venomous snakes. They can be a little bit nippy at first, and this one is actually being unreasonably calm. However, he says, Ben, I would love to take a chunk out of your nose, but not today, not yet, maybe later. And man, when, when you're looking at them straight on, you really can see that, that binocular vision. He knows exactly what's going on. He knows exactly where my face is, and he's ready to take a chunk out of me if I gave him the chance, but we won't. So these are completely non-venomous species. They do get pretty long. You can get up to around six feet. Although I would say this is a pretty darn big snake uh, for this species, and you're usually not gonna see them much larger than this in nature very commonly. So no reason to be scared of these guys, uh, non-venomous. They're not even constrictors. Actually what they'll do is just kind of grab their prey. They have these really nice serrated teeth that kind of curve backwards. 
They'll just grab that fry item, thrash it around, and swallow it whole. All right, guys, this has been an absolutely gorgeous specimen to work with. Really cool snake. We'll get it right back in the grass. I'll show you guys. A lot of people say racers will chase you and stuff, but as you can see, as soon as I put him back down, all he wants is to get away. Bam, there he goes. And they can race up to about four miles an hour, which is a pretty darn good speed for a snake. That's about as fast as you can jog, so they're quick little things. Well, everyone, that's just about it for this video. I really hope that you enjoyed and learned something new about the Blue Racer Snake. If you did enjoy, I would really appreciate it if you could leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to my channel for more educational wildlife content coming every other Saturday morning. Thanks so much for watching, and keep adventuring everywhere. This has been Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.